All right, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Well, I guess you've been here for a while, so I hope you guys have been enjoying the marathon. I'm Zero, and I'll be running Aiden Rising for you guys. So, uh, this game, kind of like a precursor to 100 Heroes, which is coming out real soon now. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it gets you a little bit of lore and background going into the game. Not too much. You do see some recurring characters. Uh, we won't get to see too much of this story because Cutscene Skip exists and so we will be using it. But it's very much like a platformer fetch questy kind of game. So, I'll start off, there's these two bandits we need to heat up. Nice and simple. So, the start of your options are pretty limited. Uh, your main character right here is CJ. She's uh, essentially a treasure hunter and she is going to New Nevia, the town we're about to enter, to uh, explore the rune barrows, which is like. Um, Kind of like a old, old, school, old school ruins, essentially. But her whole thing is she's trying to find treasure as a rite of passage for uh, her family. Here we meet Isha, our rambunctious mayor, and uh, we need a permit to explore the rune barrows. And apparently it costs a lot. I think it's like a hundred thousand baka or something. But Isha tells us that, uh, like, since we obviously don't have that kind of money, you can instead uh, get access by collecting stamps. And every villager has a stamp they can give you, essentially. If you help them with something. So basically we're uh, running errands until uh, we have enough stamps to explore the Rune Barrows. So here we're going to our first little quest. We're going to go find the kitty. Uh, we're going to go find Yum Yum if I recall correctly. Yeah, there's Yum Yum. <laughs> Yo Coyote paying off his nice debt. Let's go. <laughs> I can't wait for KOD to it in two runs. It'd be great. The dice have blessed them. When you get dice luck like that, you know you're gonna be a Suicune 2 runner. Alright, so main movement for at least the early games is gonna be essentially this. Dash jumping. The reason being, dashes do move you faster, but um, they have this like harsh stop them, kind of like what we saw there. And uh, the way we kind of negate that is by jumping afterwards, which uh, lets us keep some of the forward momentum going. Essentially, down with jumping forward is the same speed as walking, but the dash is faster. So we like dash, jump, and that way we don't have to dash and then stop. All right, so got our first stamp there. And then we asked the little girl there, Priya, if there's anyone else that needs our help. And she tells us her dad does. He's got to like repair his house, so we're going to have to go collect some lumber for him. It'll also give us an axe, which we can, we'll be able to use to now collect lumber. We couldn't before. Uh, well, we couldn't access any before anyway. Alright, so real quick before we go on that, we're going to go to the left here and enter the resident, residential interior district. And that essentially tags it for us, uh, meaning we can now warp back there, because this game does have a fast travel system. Really good one, actually. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to warp to Great Forest, and we're going to go back this way again. So these are enemies here, I just don't care about them. And notice how I dash for those guys, your dashes have a lot of iframes. Which is why they're really good. Most like, it'll be our main form of dodging as well as movement. Killing these just so they don't hit me. You can see there the harsh stop I was talking about. I hit once, no biggie. Uh, later on, getting hit will be much more dangerous because they can status you and because we won't be upgrading our armor pretty much at all. Since why upgrade armor when you can just not get hit? Uh, plus their statuses, their potential issue, but at this point in the game, it's fine. We can take plenty. And one character, well, right now we only have one character, we will be getting two more. Um, but uh, when a character dies, the game will like, let you help Potion if I recall correctly. And if you have more than one character, it'll just swap you to the next one. Once all your characters die and you have no health potions, then you game over and you go back to your auto save or last save, whatever. Anyway, um, we were generous enough to get loan this house here, so we have somewhere to sleep while we're here. All right, so next we're gonna go back to the plaza. A little bit faster to warp. And we're gonna talk to Shiva. Shiva's like the like resident old man of the town. He wants to repair the clock tower here, but he needs some great one. Um, what was it? A giant tree branch. I don't remember. Some lumber. Some special lumber. So we're gonna go back into the forest for the third time, and we're gonna go get him some. 
He says it's really dangerous though. Uh, that's kind of our warning that this is going to be a little bit harder. And we're going to go a bit deeper than the last few times. I do want to get all these lumber along the way. Uh, later on in the game, we'll be we'll have to do like other quests, and those will take more resources. So I want to collect uh, like all the as many resources as I can now, just so I don't have to do it later. I also could optionally kill these guys here, the gargoyles, but uh, at this point I'm really weak, and it takes a while. So I'm opting into delaying it because I will need their drops to uh, upgrade my gear later. Alright, so there is a force battle on the screen, it's one of three. We got this one, which gives us a lot of slime joey, and it's the fastest one to clear, but... It's also, like, uh... Doesn't give us any gargoyle wings, which is a bit unfortunate. Right, we'll kill these guys. I'm gonna kill this guy too, because later on I will need to drop. Got one wing. And got the Titan Nectar, perfect. I need one drop. So now I don't have to bother with them anymore. Here we meet uh, Guru, uh, King Guru Warrior. Um, he will be a playable character later on, but for now it's just intros. Oh. Wow. As I go through, I want to kind of keep track of my lumber drops in the bottom left, or uh, whatever else I'm like, going trying to get. I do not want to miss any. That are, there is like a bit of a backup I can do if I miss something, but I do I miss something, and we get our first boss fight with Giant Tree. Pretty straightforward, but the timing to get the optimal warm kill can be a little bit hard. So, uh, first off, he has this white shield you can see at the bottom there. We need to break that first before he becomes vulnerable. You know, four attacks. That was bad. The hard part is getting that low jump into attack. Not the cleanest, but it's fine. And there we, uh, the giant tree bow is what we needed to finish our quest, so we got what we needed, and we can head out of here. So I didn't really mention these, but these signposts are essentially fast travels in dungeons. They can't connect this to, like, our town, but they can connect this to anywhere in the dungeon, including the entrance. So we can just do that. Yeah, that's a good question. Why doesn't Alex ask for this? I think it, it was somewhere around like 20 hours for all stamps as well. It's not a very long game, but it's fun. It's like, it's a really chill game to play, especially if you've got some downtime. I played this uh, after I got some uh, root canals done. That was a really good way to take my mind off of it. It's not a, like a super deep complex game, but the platforming's fun and it's like, it's, it's nice and comfy. Did you fight the tree again later on? So maybe, maybe we can keep it interested. Anyway, we've now unlocked a new part of town, Outlander Lane. This is where like all the shops and stuff will be opened up. But uh, essentially we're trying to find more people to help now so we can get more stamps. So we gotta talk to Sarita, and then we gotta talk to Rajiv, who's all the way on the other side here. So we're gonna slowly make our way down here. And jumping does nothing, it's just for fun. When's all stamps? I don't know when uh, when someone works on it. I don't really have any more interest in routing this game. Alright, so we're gonna make another trip to the Great Forest. Cause we need to get a heavy stone and lightweight lumber. Those are the tier two of like lumber and stone. Uh, we haven't really been able to collect stone yet. That'll unlock soon though. I should have delayed that. Oh well. On the way, I'll also grab these two lumber. But they're essentially like store items at the moment, so we can just pick them up here. Sadly, that's not the case later on. We can only get one copy of them this way. Oh, that was bad. Let me make the jump. Uh, we will need more of those later on. So it is a shame that we can't just collect them that way constantly. But it is what it is. And then we're gonna go report Sarita, get her her thing, and get Rajiv his thing. And I think after that point, we finally get access to the quarry. Which is where we want to go for treasure hunting. Supposedly, yeah. It wasn't available in the beta, but I assume that's just because, yeah, it's a beta. 
I mean, any person doesn't care about stamps for the most part. It just does whatever is fastest to beat the final boss. All stamps actually gets all the stamps. It's like a 100% run. And uh, any person we get 30 stamps. It's actually a nice number because it gets us our first town upgrade, but it's unintentional. It just happened to line up that way. It is kind of good for the final boss, though. Having an extra link attack, which is a bonus uh, for uh, upgrading your town. Also, if I'm not paying too much attention to the chat, I apologize. I gotta read my notes. I have not done one run of this since I last ran it in, like, Sweet Upon 4 or whatever. I did run through off-stream, like, without a timer and stuff, so I'm not completely rusty, but... It's been a while, and I kind of need to read notes. I always seem safe for Rising. It wasn't the beta, really. I wonder why I didn't get anything then. Maybe my Rising isn't in Steam Cloud and that mess with it. I don't know. I didn't see anything. Weird, I didn't get anything. And I definitely have rising saves. I probably just uh, don't have them connected to Steam Cloud or something. No, I can mess with it. Anyway, this is core exploration time, but we can't actually do anything here yet, so we're just gonna run through. Alright, so uh, there we like, uh, there was a little earthquake and a big rock fell on our way. We tried to break up our pickaxe and our pickaxe broke, so now we gotta find the smithy. And as you go through the game, more and more people like pop up here and stuff. Conveniently, like story related stuff. So this is gonna be our blacksmith Tatara. We'll probably be making an appearance in uh A and N. I think uh, most of these characters will be. And then we go back to the quarry, we got ourselves a pickaxe, so now we can mine some ore. We only need three right now, so we're just gonna get three. Because right now we have a broken weapon, so we do like no damage to enemies. Best movement, sadly. Not too bad. Those uh, puff balls, even though I do like no damage, they're very squishy, so I'm not really threatened by them. You just one shot them if I get anything. Got ourselves our free ore, we need to repair our weapon. And we're gonna talk to Tara. He'll fix up our weapon. And we'll also get Guru here, which will be our second character. He is like the heavy swords and thing like Victor tier. He's honestly not that useful, but the one property he has that's really good is uh, shield breaking. Certain enemies have shields, and he has uh, like he does the most damage to shields. There we go. We got Guru. Normal mode. Uh, like normal simple mode is how your characters switch between each other during combat. We want normal, so like we tell them when to switch. Game's really simple. Basically, X is jump, square is CJ attack, triangle is Guru attack, and circle will be your third character's attack. Really straightforward. Anyway, so we're supposed to go to the quarry now, but we're gonna make a quick detour here to Forest Cave because I'm gonna collect some stone because we'll be needing it very soon, and it'll be faster to get it now. While I'm doing that, I'll also be trying to farm these gargoyle wings as we will be needing them really shortly. This is a bit unlucky, but let's be count uh, quite slime joey, so it's not so bad. The drop pickups can be a little bit finicky, so you have to be somewhat careful. We're gonna do that, go back to the entrance. Two wings. Um, I feel like I'll be pretty good on Slime Jelly. I already got the Force Fight. Nice, I hope you're enjoying. And you spot some references. Uh, what? Controller? So something that happens with this game, sometimes it uh, just like freezes your inputs. I was not holding right there, but I got stuck on the right input. A little bit unlucky that we got this battle again, but it is what it is. You also have to be careful to not juggle things there. 
because then like it takes longer for the drops to fall or come out. Okay, counts. Not the, oh, oops, I walked back to the same place. <laughs> Let's go to quarry. So the reason I want to collect this stone is here we can get a cutscene we're not gonna watch where Melor, another like mage character, essentially breaks like damages the quarry and becomes too dangerous to uh, navigate. And to repair it, these uh, Karina here needs six stone. So I just got the stone ahead of time that way. I don't have to trip back. I don't have to go back and forth. And now while we wait for the area to get repaired, we're going to go back to like Outlander Lane and do some more chores. Oops. I don't think so. I think it was the same. I never compared them honestly, but I think from initial findings, dash jumping was the best. Backwards dashing into jumping might be theoretically better, but it would be terribly uncomfortable, I think. Uh, residential interior. So we're going to continue doing our chores here. Bird trap. So there's two types of weapon upgrades and gear upgrades. There's like the ones of Tatara here, which is like level. And then there's the ones of Bertrand and Fida, which are tier, which unlock like new abilities and stuff, or multiple attacks. So here we're gonna get our first weapon upgrade for tier, and we're gonna get a better upgrade for CJ essentially, which will give her one more attack. So instead of being able to do two at a time, I can do three at a time. I'm still working on Octopath at the moment's unit. After that, I kind of want to go back to FF13. We'll see how things pan out. Alright, I'm at six wings, so I need six more wings. I think I caught that. Alright, next is Frida. She needs some paint. So we're gonna go to the Great Forest and get her some. Back to the Forest Cave again we go. Nice, I got a drop there. You saw like the little purple orb. That is a like money drop, essentially. I do want some of those. I'm not too concerned with it, but like, if I have something convenient, I can grab on the way. So there you saw I did two attacks in the air before I was only able to do one. That's the weapon upgrade. That's, I think, three wings. And here you see one of the things that Guru's good at. I'm going to need these crystals eventually, so I'm just grabbing them now. This is a power bomb level one. Actually, a very important chest that buffs your damage by 10% for a little bit of time, and we're gonna need that to hit some very uh, to hit a very tight damage threshold later. We also have our first kind of bossish enemy right here. We're gonna fight a wolf. We have link attacks available now, but we're not gonna use them here most likely just because it's kind of impractical. Because we need to be on the move constantly, dodge these. Or we can get hit and... Hit. Wow, I, I did not play that very well. Oh well, fine. I'll pick up a potion quarry. Got my paint. Nice, got a drop there, so we're probably good on money now. You saw how much damage did though, since I have like no upgrades, I'm kind of under leveled. Took over half my health bar with one hit. Alright, four wings. I need two more. Uh, wait, is that enough? I think we have another trip later. Yo, hell yeah, thank you for gifting the subs. <laughs> yeah, build her fucking retirement. That would actually be hilarious. Yeah, we'll have another chance to get wings. Uh, I'm like remembering the route as I go, so I need two more wings. Uh, that is worth remembering. Alright, so here we got to upgrade our armor, story reasons as well, but it is nice because now we get double jump, which is useful. Alright, go back to 
plaza. Now we're gonna go talk to like our apothecary guy. We're gonna have to do some annoying stuff for him. Uh, well, here we'll unlock another street again. There's Jean from uh, This Week in Universe. She just changed her look a little bit, but that's definitely her. So this is going to be our puppet carry. Here we can buy potions. I will craft one healing potion because the game forces me to. It also gives you the ingredients you need for this, so you don't have to go and collect them. You didn't need it for like the crystal and stuff, um, or like the other stuff, but here specifically you get everything you need from story. And to continue on, we have to craft this health, health potion. Yeah, I'm very good on Slime Joey. <laughs> I need to have six left over essentially after this. I had 13. It's because we got those force fights. So here we're supposed to go back to our base where we're going to talk to some people to unlock some recruiting. Renee isn't important. Like, he's the shop, essentially. He's where you can sell stuff. And the reason that's important is I'm going to need money later. I'm never going to buy anything, but I need to be able to sell. And then Hogan's your trader, and we'll be doing that a lot because you can trade materials with him. It's actually how we need him to complete endgame. We're going to have to do a few quests for him. Now we go back to the quarry, it's finally opened up again, and we can go a bit deeper this time. I'm also going to have to track different drops now, so I'm going to focus up a bit more. We're going to need four yellow slime jelly and nine stone wings. Get this for safety since it's a marathon. I don't quite one-shot you. Alright, I will go back for that. Start. Got one. Not the best. Alright, so zero nine. Or zero one. Counting is hard, guys. Trust me, I'm not even kidding. Genuinely. Alright, didn't get this force battle, that's nice. So Guru can knock back projectiles like this, that's his other thing. Although I would prefer if he actually killed it. Alright, so I skipped this battle. That's a force battle right there. Downside is I didn't get those two ever crystals though, so I'm gonna have to make that up later. I don't even know if it's worth it. Honestly, I just kinda wanna see if I could because I'm out of practice. I'm not gonna bother killing those guys just because they're in really awkward positions. This is our first use of a link attack, not too useful. Okay. We're good on slime joeys already. Hoping to get some money drops there, but no luck. That's fine. Okay, right. so here we find the lore, and we convince her to come home, be a good girl. Right, two stone wings. I believe it's Alanderlane. This is the mayor, uh, not the mayor. What? Is, like, benefactor, I guess, of the town? Because Ish is the mayor. It's kind of like a big shot in the town. Alright, and now we can finally go deep into the quarry for reals this time. One of the things you might have noticed there is that I didn't tag any signs because we didn't reach any, which means we're gonna have to traverse through all that again. But uh, we are gonna spend some time here and upgrade our weapons. I mean, this is why we needed the Titan Nectar earlier, because I need it for that weapon upgrade, and it's a really important threshold, so I can't skip it. Or at least I would need to do something else alternatively instead. I would need to get some more damage somehow. Because the next boss that we're going to fight is kind of cycle-based, so we want to make sure we can one-cycle it. Yeah, I'll go back for that. Ah. Sticky platforms. Meanwhile, I'm still collecting ore as I go along. Essentially, like, all these resources along the way, I'll do my best to collect. Oh, we got the force fight here this time. Nah. Also, the J 
janky. Good amount of stone wings, though. So these are amber crystals. I will need these for weapon upgrades later. So since I missed out on two earlier, I'm gonna have to get two extra. Annoying HP right there. Got that stone wing. I like to use Link's attack. Link attacks all, all like that just to keep forward momentum. Don't necessarily need to use them for damage. They're a good way to move sometimes. Back the signpost. That like Guru is super sluggish. And there's a force fight here. What do we get? Okay, my yeah. Once again, did not let me turn around there. Make attack through this guy. Nice and simple. I don't need anything from these guys. Just need to advance. Oh, I couldn't do it. There's a way to like dash through that essentially. It's just I'm um, very rusty. I don't remember how to do it. Okay, I'll have to go down later. Grab those. So I did say I needed a few more amber crystals. That's why we went here. This is a bit of a detour. Um, I have a good amount of wings. I'm probably okay. This will knock them down, so they'll be on the way to collect. I just got both. Probably good on wings already. Grab this health potion, because Marathon. And we got our first big boss. I'm intentionally going to walk here, because if you get too close, uh, he'll do a different attack at the start. And we want the attack he does, which is a, like a stone throw. So what we do here is we use our power bomb we picked up earlier, knock the stone into him, and do double link. And there we go. The thing is, right, like, a little bit after that moment right there, he was about to get up, and then I would have to break the shield again. And the second time around, it's way tighter, which is why you gotta make sure you kill him in that one cycle. So you might have noticed he dropped, like, a... I forget what the item's called, but um, I'm gonna need another one of those for the story eventually, so we're gonna do a little trick for that. Well, wouldn't even call it a trick, really. Get this chest for a bit of safety. I'm just going to sell that later. We do have two accessory slots in all our characters that we can use to well, equip accessories along with uh, rune slots we don't have unlocked quite yet. I could equip that defense ring, but uh, there's really no need. Wow, that was new. He, can't, he hit me out of my link. I'm not sure I've seen that before. Oh no, I've definitely seen that before. Alright, so here we got a little bit of a dungeon. We're finally in the rune barrows now, which is where we want to go to find rune lenses. We also got, got blocked in by the bandits. They're not even really bandits, more like suspicious men. So we're gonna traverse through here. Notice those electric guys, those are actually very annoying. They're not too big, much of an issue here, but there'll be later screens where they're a big threat. Anyway, so these things are like kind of like puzzle things. Oops, this quick. And uh, when you solve it, it'll let you warp. This one warps us back to the village, conveniently enough. Gets us a way out because we were blocked in by the collapse earlier. Okay, we're good on stone wings. I got more in that trip than I needed. So we're good on all the early game farming stuff. Actually, no, I still need two more gargoyle wings. That's the one thing I'm missing. So we're gonna go to the farm here, tag that, and then we're gonna warm. So I mentioned earlier I would need another drop from the golem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fight him now. The reason being, if I fight him any later in the story, he's gonna upgrade tier two. And that fight becomes a lot harder. I won't be able to one cycle the shield. I won't be able to one cycle the fight. It was actually one of the biggest pain points I encountered in the early routing of this. This fight gets actually like hard and long if you let him upgrade. We're gonna do the exact same kill. It's 
sometimes you build up your link too early. There's no way to like stop your uh, characters from linking when you like switch between them. Essentially, the way the links work is you're do attacking and you attack with your other character. That's the link. That's all that is. Like in terms of inputs, it's the same thing as just switching and doing attacks as well. Giant stone. That's the item. So anyway, that's done, and we still need to collect one, uh, we gotta get some story stuff here. So we're gonna do this right now as well. I'm gonna need more crystals for weapon upgrades, so we're gonna grab those. I get the Garwo, I had to get the Garwo, Garwo, nice. Got more crystals. There we go. Being hit's a bit annoying, but it's not too important, really. I got the force fight again. Very unfortunate. At this point, this is trivial. These guys are level one. It just takes extra time. All right, good. We're good on Garbo wings now. So we're good on all the resources I need early game. We are going to progress through here. When you hit this guy, he uh, becomes uninteractive for a moment. Easy way to get past him. So we're going this way to get a chest for Hogan. Uh, we also like need some stuff on the final screen here. I just unlocked now. I'm pretty sure it's required for story progression. Get all the lumber along the way. Hey, Kamado. Now uh, we're gonna have a rematch with Mr. Tree here. Alex Astor's last moment of joy in this run. Much easier this time though, because we're way, way stronger. It is a stronger tree than before, but even then, that's all it takes. There's a boulder there, we break that, grab the strength ring over here. I get the item we came here for, the agricultural seed, which we need to get the farm started. And done. That power bomb we used earlier has carried us through this whole point and still active. One that we used before the golem. Important for the second cycle of golem, less still for the tree, but still nice for the tree. Ah! Nice one, Doc. So I think at this point is where um, the golem upgrades once you get the stamp, if I recall correctly. It's either this one or the one right after. But the next one is we just have to give lumber to um, Armila. And uh, you can see our resource count at the top right too for like things we need. It's a good way to check your resources as you, go, as you go along. I should have 11 here and I saw that I had 14 before so I know I have enough. I haven't missed any lumber. Because sometimes you like you hit the lumber, but like CJ doesn't collect it properly because you didn't get close enough. It's been kind of like Spyro with um, Sparks, kind of like not always getting the gems. It's kind of the same thing. It's a more mechanic. All right. So here we're gonna finish up the recruitment for Renee. Well, uh, we need to find, for Sir Renee, for Renee, we need to find something for him that's worth exactly 100 Bakwa, which is the currency in this game. And there's a chest that gives, has exactly 100. Exactly 100 Bakwa is worth exactly 100 Bakwa. It's a silly thing, I don't know. The reason I do this now, though, is because it'll get me a little bit closer to Isha here when I warp. Because where you end up on the screen kind of depends on where you're warping from as well. It'll go for, like, the closest spot, essentially. So there we met Lugo, his like a mercenary deal that Isha hired to protect the town. He's actually in the beta as well. And uh, we need to find a whetstone for him. That's like our next thing. And we tried to go, but we're blocked off by this giant crystal thing. So um, to get through this, we need to get a nerf rune essentially. And that's gonna be our next part of the story. We're gonna try to get a nerf rune. Which involves basically unlocking all the mage shops. What am I doing? Can't hit that back with CJ. Alright, so here we're gonna go to Second Street. And we're gonna start getting some of these quests done. 
We're also gonna do our first cell menu here. This opens up like the um, like raid like the selling shop essentially. Pawn shop there, that's what it's called. I have it in my notes. I guess you don't buy anything here, it's literally just for selling. Alright, and then we're gonna sell some stuff. We don't need these giant branches ever. We didn't get the pelt off the drop. I got some ancient scrap. Got a rare stone. And I can sell this defense ring. Probably get enough. Also, you might have noticed there that we had an explorer tax of 30%. That's like... That's literally just a town taxing you. Well, on a certain story point, I'll actually go up to 60%, and then at the end it'll go down to 0%. So, if theoretically, if you want, you can sell later and you'd say you get more money out of it, but there's no point. It doesn't do anything for us. And then we need the money now. By the time we get 0% tax rate, we don't need money anymore. So next up, we're going to talk to Bertrand, get his quest going. We need to talk to Ranveer for him, who's over here. We're going to go back here. This is all routed in the way to like minimize travel time. Talk to Sarita, this is for Hogan's quest. Then we're gonna run on through and talk to everyone. I actually wonder if it can be faster to warp. I think I've tested it before and it wasn't. Because now we gotta go to Bertrand here. And maybe we could warp to Second Street. And then uh, walk out. I notice as we do this stuff, we also get EXP and money. So we can level up off of this. Uh, for free though, we gotta talk to the star, and here we're gonna make a quick stop and uh, buff our attack power by 5% with a bath. The thing about this is when you go to sleep, essentially, you lose the buff so you have to do it again, and Rajiv's pretty far out of the way. So we don't want to do it unless we have to. And we don't want ever want to sleep, essentially, when we have it up. But there are two four sleeps in this story. One of them is before the load golem fight, and we'd have to make a quick, like, a big detour to buff ourselves. So we just hold off until now. It's also why we need to buff Groove's weapon at 3. We could do level 2 and then do the buff, but the weapon is faster. Because you don't have to make that big detour. And it carries on throughout the run, although honestly, level 3 versus level 2 doesn't matter later on. Groove's not going to be getting too much use from here on out. All right. Here we go to 2nd Street. Finish Hogan's quest, and here we do some trading. Yeah, that's a kangaroo. That's Guru. The kangaroo. It's behind Guru. I'm like, where did it go? Alright, so we need to get one heavy stone. And we need to get four huge ore. Good, I have all the... I haven't missed anything yet. And that's a 3-5 war as like a stamp reward. Essentially, in Hogan's shop, for every 10 steps you get, there will be a reward. And the first one's for 5-war. Uh, Alright, so Now we complete Ibla's quest. For that, we need to talk to Isha. And here we're gonna buy an Earth Rune, but we're still gonna need a Rune Lens. And for that, we're gonna need to talk to George. And for this, we need Amber Crystals, which is why we needed to be collecting them earlier on in Quarry. But it's not just this. So you saw we had 11, we needed 5. I'm also gonna need them for upgrading my weapon. And the heavy stone that we just traded for is used here. So these are tier, tier 2 materials. You need to upgrade your weapon or your tools to get them naturally. And essentially it's just RNG whether or not you get them. It's like, for example, you get a tier 2 lumber, you upgrade your uh, tool to tier 2, and then you hit the lumber and you hope it gives you a lightweight lumber, which is a tier 2 version. But that obviously is uh, not ideal. I have to upgrade my tools, which is pretty expensive. I have to do quests to get access to upgraded tools, and then I have to hope I get the drops. So instead, we go for the trading route, which is upgrading Hogan and just trading for everything we need with Hogan. Okay. And then now we can finally do our equipment. So I'm going to equip that Strength Ring on CJ and Nerf Rune. And now we can go to Quarry. And <laughs> it's way over Sweet and Three. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Let's 
still do need to uh, collect this ore along the way. I do have pretty, uh, like, two extra spore, uh, spore, ore routed into the run, just in case. Uh, now what I can do with those two is that I can trade for just one stone or one lumber if needed. So if I'm missing something at the end, I can just back it up that way. Actually, I don't even have to kill you guys. I can just leave them. There was a bronze ore on the ground there, but we can get it on the way out. I do need to collect six of these. Got a drop. Got two drops there. Nice. You can dash through that, by the way. I ran this game for quite a while before I learned that. And that thing is actually a big blocker. When the wait for cycles is slow. Use our iframes to get through that guy. And we climb back up. You can get a little bit more air with an attack, so that's why I'm like doing an attack there. It lets you get up onto that ledge when you wouldn't be able to normally. And a bit faster than double jump, because with double jump you have to wait to fall back down. Alright. So we got everything we need. Oh, uh, oh, I'll just do it properly. I'm supposed to go to Plaza, but it's faster to go to Plaza from here. Because once again, where you come from matters. And finally, we can, since we, the sign's so wonky, you do need that sign tag. But as you can see, it's a bit dumb. <laughs> so we're just gonna speed on through here. And we got another porter with another puzzle. I have these all in my nose, that's why. Well, you guys, I don't have a open, but like, I'm kind of just like looking at my notes as I do it. I'm like doing the inputs in my hands. I'm not even looking at my screen. I'll sign post will use later so I can hold off on tagging it. Kind of an optional earth bomb here. Nice. That is harder than it looks. Look at how big the radius is around that thing. That Those guys are actually very dangerous. I do need to kill some later to uh, get the drops. This might hit me. Yeah. Oh, okay, as long as it doesn't freeze me, I don't care. And here we have a force fight. This thing is actually painful. I'm gonna use an earth bomb here. We got the mixed fight, which is a little bit harder to play. Just got to wait here. These guys leave a little bit of like, uh... Oh, I actually interrupted him. Nice. Crits interrupt, so... Crits are really good there. I think I only got one Icy Wing. Kind of not the best. I need four Icy Wings and four Blue Slime Jellies. Those are the goals for uh, next farm. Everything else is still like stuff I can pick up off the ground. So no problems there, but uh, I will have to monitor my drops for those. And if I don't get them, I'll have to like kill extra stuff. But yeah, up until this point, we're still like level like level three weapons, tier one upgrades, huh? Oh, okay, the sign didn't activate yet, but even though I interacted with it, that's so weird. I'm like, dang, I I know I tagged this sign. Why is it not working? Anyway, we're blocked off like this magical ice thing. Okay, I got one two, and we need a magical girl or some kind of like magical power to get through it. So we need to find ourselves a mage, and we're big in war when we go and do this. But it turns out our rambunctious mayor Isha also has the power of magic. And she's actually very good. We'll be using her a lot, unlike Guru. And now that we have all three characters, and we're while we're here, and we have some ingredients, we can go and upgrade our weapons some more. And our armor. I have to talk to Tatara first. It was a chill game. I like this game. Not a game of the year or anything, but I enjoyed my playthrough. So, up 
upgrade our weapons to as high as I can right now. Because we're about to do a lot of dungeon crawling. I used to have it routed so you'd leave and then come back. Like, you would do this, go into the dungeon, and then later in the dungeon, leave and come back just so you can upgrade your weapons even further because you progress the story more. But uh, I decided against it. Also, when you do your first upgrade, you get to name your weapon, so... I don't want to change it. I think it's Astro Void by default, which is actually pretty cool. And here we get our most important tier upgrade. We're going to upgrade CJ's armor, and that'll give us the ability to air dash, which is super useful. And it'll give us our fastest form of movement. And then we go back. I should also mention the weapon upgrade. For CJ, give me a down attack and an up attack, which is really useful for movement and boss fights. And for Isha, let's redo three orbs instead of two, which is also notable. But that's what my movement's gonna look like from now on, more or less. Looking for drops. Nice. Got one. Nice crit. Alright, so I'm 2 2 on drops. Okay, that's unfortunate. Okay. 2 3. Still 2 3. I'm forgetting that I just unlocked my good movement. Got a better group this time, too. I was gonna say, watch how much smoother this goes with Isha. Oh. As soon as I say that, I get frozen. So here we see our first instance of getting status. Getting status is really rough. Okay, I'm good on Icy Wings, but I think I still need two more blue slime jellies, so I'll try to farm this guy, too. Alright. I need one more blue slime jelly and we should be good. Yeah, I've already played for the beta. I'm waiting for the release. I'm very much looking forward to it. I think everyone in here probably is. We get our last blue slime jelly. Yeah, we got it. Nice. Sometimes enemies like you can go through, or if they're sleeping, or if they're not paying attention, that's always handy. I don't believe we need that signpost. No, oh, let's actually use a potion. I don't need this, but let's let's err in the side of caution. That's like a defense ring or something, we don't need that. Wow, look how fast I am. So good. <laughs> totally don't have the notation to do these all my notes. Pretty sure we don't need that signpost either. Hopefully I don't regret that. Oh, I do need to kill one of you guys. I forgot. Wow. That hit me after they died. You can see how annoying status can be like. I'm just stuck there, can't move. Or I can move, but like it constantly knocks me back. Need those. Wow. He actually got me there. Okay, this is going terribly. This is why we get potions. That was really bad. <laughs> Alright. I think that's all the amber crystals we need, if I recall correctly. Bronze ore here. Bronze ore there, and we're good on bronze ore now. Let me pick up one more just for safety. Rather convenient. Now here we're gonna take advantage of link attacks. Barely made it. It was a little bit off, but. That is actually a very painful part if you don't do that. No, you can't party swap on onto any of them. Annoyingly. 
Ouch. That was a terrible angle. This boss is- oh, it's still alive. Magic pixel right there. <laughs> I did not even see his health bar anymore. I was gonna say, this boss is pretty easy, you shouldn't get hit there. That's just me being bad. I kinda misread his angle. And even then, it's not that hard to dodge. And we continue on through. Oh, okay. Nice uh, interaction there. I really try to avoid like those little pickaxe flips off the ledges because it's very slow animation. You get stuck for quite a while. The only sweet game you played is Tear Crease. That is regrettable. Not to say it's like a bad game, like Steve said, but it's like the only one that's not in the universe, and I do think it's the weakest one of the series. IMO. That sign I do need. This screen's a bit challenging as well. I need to pick up crystals as I go through here, but the annoying thing is these little puppers. They're in kind of not the best spots. And also that. Yo. Okay, I got three. I saw it in the bottom left. I was worried I didn't get that last one. Thanks. Okay, I am getting kind of owned by hitboxes here. That one was on me, but the first two... I don't know how that made contact. Okay, really? It's fine, I needed to burn fruit potions anyway. We got a wolf. By himself is not that dangerous, but uh, later on we'll have some fights with these guys, which are terrible. And even honestly, these guys are not pleasant to fight. Especially if I play it this poorly. Oh my god, why, why am I so bad? Terrible. Anyway, that thing had a runes on inside it, which is very interesting to us. Has a lot to do with the lore of the story. Pick that up. Oh, you need materials like this for quests and money and st uh, quests and stuff. Or like upgrading, but I'm just taking those so I can sell them. They actually sell for quite a bit. Alright, crest, and then we warp back. This is a little bit faster than using the sign in here. And we open up a new path using the rune lens into uh, the orb thing right there. Which essentially gives us a flashback sequence. It's like a prehistoric camera. Uh, like our pre projector more like. And it plays out like a series of events. By the way, I should have mentioned, but at some point we in here we saw Dancing Man and uh, um, it should recognize him. That's his that's her dad. Who went missing in here a long what, long time ago. Jeez. That was a hitbox. No, not you. I don't think I did that correctly. Oh, no. I did fine. Looking at it again. Alright, I'm gonna focus here because this screen is pain. Nice. That screen, if you get caught by anything, it becomes so dangerous. You're likely to get status and it'll get stuck between like five enemies. It's terrible. That's actually a screen I practiced quite a bit before this run. Okay, here we're gonna change our equipment. This issue will be doing a lot more work from now on. I'm gonna give her the strength rings, which are, are the same for like mage and non mage. Game doesn't care. We're also going to use that Earth Bomb 2 I picked up.
petrified him there. Very nice. That's why being petrified, he somehow gets a hit in. Nice, I killed the little ones. Okay, these hitboxes are so deceptive. Ran out of shots. Dude, what is this magic pixel stuff going on? That's the second fight in a row. Where I'm like, I got him. And <laughs> I'm ready to start moving away. It's just like, oh no, he's alive. Very, very important we tag that sign. That sign we'll have to warp back to, and we get out of warped out of here after the next fight. So here we got our third boss fight coming up, the Blizzard Brothers. And if this fight goes well, I will never touch the ground. Hopefully it goes well so I can show it off. Oh, I touched the ground! No! The floor is lava! It's actually fine to touch the ground. I just wanted to avoid it for uh, content. Did twice. I suck. Right now, I actually can't touch the ground. It'll damage me. I keep losing my juggle. I don't know why. This is a big attack I want to avoid. Yeah, this was not a good fight. <laughs> Bro. I need one hit. Why does this keep happening in this run? Oh, frustrating. <laughs> Everything's living with one HP. And then I get owned. Alright, so there we completed the boss and we unlock a giant hunk of ice. There's another uh, big crystal thing ahead of us. And this time it's yellow, so once again we can't progress. So we're gonna have to go back to town and find a way to get through it. It's a lightning elemental pillar. Now we need to get access to lightning element. You also notice that when I gave Visha the gear, her attack change, it became like, instead of just being a plain orb, it became an earth rock. Her attack change is based off what element you give her, and uh, we'll be using lightning very shortly, which is... has a downside of being short range, but it's very good because it hits more than once. It hits multiple times. Alright. So I do this, then go back. So we hear, start hearing rumors about some bandits, we're gonna talk to some people, see what's going on. That's a good point, it's towards the Great Forest. And we're gonna go check that out. We didn't see it earlier, but there was this like a uh, spot we couldn't access here before because we didn't have Earth. That guy is not really a match for me anymore at this point. Oh wow! Now I can get through. Uh, this is like a no whole other part of the forest, but we don't need to see all that. We just get a cutscene and we can leave. But basically, there's a bunch of bandits camping out here, and Guru has a talk with them, and they agree to leave. And uh, he does it by himself. We're just confused as to how the hell he did it. Which is relevant for the plot later. And here we're gonna make one more side trip, our last trip to the quarry. Not for really, not for this. I did that again. Quarry. Go to the cavern. We need to get another chest for Hogan to unlock more trades so we can trade for tier 3 materials. We're gonna do that now. What? Oh, I was floating there. That was interesting. Whatever. Ow. I'm kind of getting owned in this run, not gonna lie. Where's the chest? Did I forget to talk to him? I think I forgot to talk to him. Oh, I'll have to go... Bro. Alright, well, this lost some time. Not a big deal. It's fine. I 
I think when I... When was I supposed to do this? Oh, I was supposed to do it before I came here. I skipped the step. Let's do this properly now. Oops. I still did it wrong. All right, one quarter, second street. Uh, talk to Hogan. Pawn shop, and here we're gonna sell our stuff. We can sell the white belt. That's worth a lot. Don't need that either. I don't know when I got it. Sell all our silver. Sell our lapis. And we can sell these drops. I am like more than good on money, but we're being extra safe. Okay, and then where do we go? Now on your lane. So here we can finally upgrade our weapons to tier 12 or level 12. It's not the max, you can get you can get up to 16 before you beat the game, if I recall correctly. I want to beat the game and go up to 30, I think. But this is the highest we're gonna get in this run. This is also why I was collecting those slime jellies and icy wings. I need four of each here, along with the other materials I've been collecting. Not a good toe. Yeah, I'm really glad main character has a voice as well. Um, very good change. I like the fact that it's like a named character that's voice acted. Alright, now we're gonna go to Quarry and we're gonna do that whole annoying trip again. Because I had to wait until I did this. Don't worry about we we're like, uh, that's meant very generous. We're not even close to having an issue. There we go, that's more like it. We just needed some practice. And now there's a chest here. This is what was missing earlier. What? How did I trigger the fight? Scam. I never got like into the zone really. Also unlucky that we got it, but I like this little trick here. Convince it isn't in air dash to get food all of them. Alright, that's much better. Alright, and now we go back into, uh, Blizzard. And progress further in through the Rim of Arrows. So here we're just enjoying the cold. That's uh, not gonna last too much longer, sadly. Next we're gonna enter California in the summer. First puzzle. <laughs> and here it is, California during the summer. AKA the Wall of Ruins. I'm over exaggerating, obviously, that ain't that bad. Especially recently, the summers haven't been that bad as of late, but. I much preferred the snowy mountains. Dungeon here, though, is much easier uh, compared to the other one. Some of these are kind of wonky, like the slopes and how they interact. This was pretty bad traversal. So 
Sorry for not giving you guys more of war background. I just don't remember it all that well myself. Okay, I am actually pretty bad in potion count, so. Essentially, we're exploring the ruins looking for Aisha's dad, who is, like, acting weird and dancing for some reason. Also, CJ wants to find our lens, and so, uh, so is Guru. He wants to find a big lens. He wants to find treasure as well. Doesn't really say why, though. I need that one. Also, boss fight. This isn't, like, an official boss fight, but it's actually kind of a pain, because he has a big shield on there. Guru is weak. Once I get the shield down, it's not so bad. That was actually clean. There are some monkey glitches, nothing useful in like speedrun at the moment. Like some of those, like I remember they're like those big elemental pillars that block you. There are ways to get past them. I think you can use like a bomb explosion, for example, or something like that. It's been a while. But this game is actually pretty... It's like, it, no game-breaking glitches. There's like annoying glitches. Like sometimes it messes with your inputs. That could just be a me issue too. I'm pretty sure it's a thing. Nice. Got the little jump. That's actually not trivial. Once again, very dangerous spot if you fall down, so Brick is to not fall down. I mean, speaking of 1, 2 has a lot of uh, game-breaking glitches. 1 especially. Well, yeah, those games have a lot, but I feel like the later ones also, like, really turn it down. Alright, this is a better fight here. No plans, but still not trivial. And Starts doing that stupid attack. The best thing you can do here is just be patient. That was pretty good. Patience in my speed run. Not a fan, but. Coming up is next boss, very important that I tag this sign. I think I'm maxed out on health potion, so I'll just leave that one on the ground for now. But here we got the Manta Worm. This one has a bit more RNG because you can throw projectiles that we knock back into him. And we want to see that as much as possible, but uh, how much he does it is really up to him. Oh, he opened with it. I did not want to link there. Did it again! What a guy. So here we already pushed him into phase two, so now we just have to wait a while. Phase two, he comes out, he gets angry at me, he yells, and then I continue to hit him. I feel like, okay, no, I thought that was gonna be another, uh... Like, this attack is bad, as you can see, because... He just sits there and I can't hit him at all. Okay, that hit me. Actually, would not mind dying here. I can't do anything with this orb because I'm burned. And when you're burned, you can't switch. And the only person I can hit it back is Guru. Alright, not too bad. Sweden 1 has, like, um, invisible characters. Those are really fun and can be very useful. So we get into we like all, know all the obvious ones, kindness, Brom, kindness, Matilda, all that fun stuff. Uh, you guys will see a lot of them in the speed runs coming up.
I think it's unintended behavior. I don't think the bombs are supposed to break the pillars. It might have been like it pushes you through the pillar. I don't remember. It's been a while. Quarter Second Street. All right, so here we need to do our final trading for materials, and my notes are kind of hard to read here, so bear with me. Supposed to trade. Really hope I did that right. Yeah, looks good. And then, durable stone. Okay, exit room quarter. <laughs> Are you guys catching playing? That's so cool. Nice. I misinterpreted that honestly. For a moment, if you guys are casually playing on Parsec right now, I'm like, damn, that's hype. So, which one of you is going to do the new Tinto out of bounds during the run tomorrow? Speaking of, there's a lot of out of bounds in uh, Sweeken 2. We found a new one like two weeks ago or so, actually. That's really cool. There's screenshots in the Discord, man. Get it together. What's your point? So we're like essentially making a delicacy for our town to uh basically for our town. It's gonna be our new thing, we're gonna have a delicacy. We've decided on like dark but why? Dude, that guy. Really wanted me. We decided on uh, Thunderbird eggs, like black Thunderbird eggs. Cooked in hot springs or something along those lines. So now we gotta collect some Thunderbird eggs to start our farm of Thunderbirds so we can get more eggs. Infinite egg hack. Uh, best way to do it is just to go get four and then go get three and then go get three. Because there are more on the screen, but I think there isn't even 10 total, so you have to do two trips regardless. And the other ones are far away and in a very dangerous area. So we literally just run back and forth here for a bit. That hitbox extends way further than you might think. Didn't pick up one egg, so I had to backtrack. Well, not backtrack, but come back a bit. So we got everything we need there. I also already had the lumber because we routed, so we have the lumber. We even have two extra lumber. We can use that to craft other materials if we miss anything. Exchange rates are generally two to one. You need two of like one to exchange for the other one, so like two lumber for one stone, two stone for one ore, etc. And then for every tier upgrade, you need three of the previous materials. So like three lumber makes one lightweight lumber. Okay, uh, do we go room quarter now? Yeah. Also, when we did the stuff with Rajiv here, we upgraded our inn, aka our baths, and now I have access to the better one here. We're gonna get our tier 2 upgrade. Get a little bit more power. Now it's attack power 7. Alright, and now we consult the elders, see if they like our delicacy, they end up loving it. And we can go back to exploring. Essentially, like, after we defeated the Mantle Worm, the mountain erupted, and we had to wait for it to clear up. And in the meantime, some geezers popped up here, so we started, like, a hot spring. Town's been busy. Alright, uh, coming up is also one of the most dangerous parts uh, for me. We're gonna have to get through a dungeon and we're gonna do it quickly, but it's very precise. 
So hopefully I can execute it correctly. So here we're going to see if we can enter the lava ruins again if it's safe, which is why we're here. And it's a little bit faster to use a sign versus going forward through the teleporter. But right now we're trying to find the rune lens to uh, match the rune lens of like one we passed by earlier. You'll see it soon enough. The backtracks. Get that potion we skipped earlier. If, we, if I already have five items in my inventory, it'll go to my storehouse and I have to like pull it out in town. And it's kind of slow, which is why I've been like checking every time I uh, picked one up. Alright, and I'm going to focus up here because this part is precise and if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong if I get status. Even if I don't get status, it's rather dangerous. I really shouldn't be getting hit by that. Wow, that warp. That warp actually got on top of me and ruined everything. Okay, this is really bad. This is exactly what I was talking about. Let's retreat for a moment. Oh my god, this is terrible. Okay, we're good. That was a perfect example of it going bad. That wizard just freaking owned me so hard. Warped on top of my head. I haven't seen that. Well, to be fair, I shouldn't have gotten hit by him in the first place. I'm doing something wrong there for sure. Well, with these wizard guys, you need to like hit them with magic before their shield goes down. It would take like a mil million physical, so you always have to do that first. I got him. Anyway, from this point on, like, the screens are easy, but the battles are not done. We have a very hard forced battle coming up, where it's like, it's not a boss, but it's multiple groups of enemies in the sequence. It's kind of like a mini boss gauntlet. Well, not quite boss gauntlet, because it's not bosses, but... These are kind of like boss... Nice input. I did not want to dash in place there. I don't like how close that guy's getting. So I'm actually going to be rather, rather cautious here. Wait for these guys to blow up. Oh, that zap actually landed right on my head. Unfortunate. This isn't going great. The fact that Yeti's still alive is a little bit... We should have to focus. These guys are kind of wrecking me. Okay, we should be good now. That was bad, but we got through. Alright, and here I'm actually gonna take the time to play a cutscene for you guys. Normally we'd skip it, but I think it's the, like the one that covers the most lore of like the Aiden universe. So we'll just uh we'll let that cutscene play. We do have the time for it. It's fairly long, but Thank you for the sub, Peace Rexy. The game remembers which barriers are broken here, so if I break the bottom one, this is much easier. But generally, you go over the top of your links. I just kind of got owned by that wizard to ruin my setup.
So anyway, yeah, I can give you guys a big war drop. Essentially, these ruins were like owned by an evil sorcerer who was trying to make rune lenses, and he found out the best way to make rune lenses is to grow them inside living things, which is why the wolf we killed earlier had one. And uh, people of New Nevia are generally cursed, and like one has any magic. And that's because they're born with a rune lens inside them. It's the curse of New Nevia, or the curse of the sorcerer. And Isha is actually that person. That's why she can use magic. And uh, we kind of like find out all this stuff here. Where am I going? This way. And we find out that the sorcerer is actually still alive and essentially controlling Isha's body, or Isha's father's body, Daskas's body. Which is why he's like all weird dancing around and doing evil stuff in the ruins. Oh, that's supposed to be an up attack. This is, uh, yeah, most modern systems. I don't remember if it's on Switch, but it's on PC, Epic PS4, PS5, Xbox stuff. By the way, the reason I jumped there is to actually avoid a link attack. I actually got hit by that. I'm so bad. Okay, I have two potions. I'd rather like do these attacks and then link if I have link available. But it's like one of the ways to avoid a link attack. You do your sequence, then you jump. And that breaks like the link activation. Yeah, it's not a very hard uh, hard run to learn. I think that like most uh, like once it's routed, it's I think it's pretty straightforward. I think the routing, even the routing, wasn't that hard, honestly. Just the material routing was a bit tedious. And I actually found route improvements like a year ago when I was probably getting this first week of Vong Four because I miscounted my materials when I originally routed it. I miscounted the requirements more accurately. I thought you needed like three lightweight lumber, but you needed three lumber, and uh, it made, that makes it way easier because that's like six less lumber. It like it really uh, trimmed down the amount of stuff you had to get. I think there was another mistake in there somewhere too. I think it cut out like two trips to the forest, if I recall correctly. Okay, uh, let's read up first. So we gotta find Abamori because he saw something shiny, like a part of the clock tower that we need to repair it. We, should, we essentially figured out that there's like another uh, pillar in the clock tower. And we're trying to get it repaired, uh, another Meneer. Um, I'm gonna buy two of these just for safety. I don't normally do this, but extra safety is good in the marathon. Also, damn, I skipped the cutscene I wanted to show you guys. No! Dang it. Uh, I'm actually kind of annoyed with myself. Okay, we go town outskirts here. I don't think I have a good save to show it. I should have gone uh, Great Forest, not town outskirts. I skipped the war, but it essentially goes into like the politics of New Nevia, the Empire's interest, a deal that was made. It's really interesting stuff, honestly. I I, I think it'll be much more interesting once we actually play A then. Uh. Because then, like, we'll have background between, like, behind all these locations. You'll learn quite a bit more about it in the beta, but it's still, uh, not quite a lot. Not enough to connect everything, really, in your mind. Yeah, muscle memory, and then the fact that I must, like, I'm more focused on commentary. So, I'm not actively thinking about the game as much. But anyway, we got the clock tower repaired. And here, notice we get a 30th stamp, which means we upgrade our stamp tier and we get a town upgrade. We get a banging town theme now, which we hear for like 10 seconds because we're at the very end. Yeah, 
Yeah, how stupid do you show uh, explain where the show are exactly? That's pretty much exactly what happened. Also, the, the side quest I did with Buga, they're completely optional. But it get, it's a, basically a free quest. You already have the thing that you need to give him from a boss fight. And it gives you a power bomb 5, which is 50% more damage. So I think it's really worth it. It pays for itself on the boss fights. I think I prefer uh, the original there, RJ. That sounds like peak content. That's how we're doing the limit break, right? If it gets in. Anyway, this is like the final ruins. Uh, you get in like deepest part, they get in through the clock tower. Just use the power bomb now. Yeah! So here's Hearst one. He makes an appearance in the beta. Pretty notable one. I'm not gonna say any more than that to avoid spoilers. Alright, I'm just gonna back away here. Let him come to me. Hey, come to me! You kind of want him near the center so you can dash through his attacks. Also, if you get him electrified, very nice. Alright, not too bad. Took one big hit, but it's fine. I think Hearst One is actually the most relevant character you see in beta. That's like in Rising. Unless I missed some stuff in the beta. Yeah, ban me. Don't see that ending until I run. I don't care. I'll push him for safety. Alright, ban us for D. I, I, it's ruined for me. Too much information. That's fine. We can take over. You jerk. Ah. Sloppy. That was annoying. So here I'm going to try to use Guru to break this freaking shield. I say try because apparently I did a really bad job. How did that hit me? This fight is going terribly. This fight you usually don't get hit at all. Wow. And since I'm burned I can't swap so my DPS is terrible because Isha's attacks operate on a charge system. Having two battle of fight here is actually like very punishing because the power bomb five only lasts for a certain amount of time. Uh, you do want to be able to clear the final boss with it. Final boss is another face type boss. Uh, I do have pretty good strats with this guy now. I can even one cycle him if the game allows me, so I'll try to do that. Good start. I uh, switched. Wow, dude, these these placements are terrible. Really? Okay, we're not one like we this. My link there sucked. Okay, well, we went after this. These are iframes, and. Uh, gotta remember we have a timer running. Hey, sub 130! 
Easy. Oh yeah, I forgot. Guru was actually working for the bad guys because that is a dollar to hostage. Big plot point. There you go. More lore for you guys. But he decides that that screw it and turns on him. He's supposed to work for her swine. Oh, yeah, and like uh, after this, he leaves to go rescue his daughter, who's also sick. And they're like, they were paying for like they were paying him so he can get her the treatment she needed. Poor alibi. Stop yelling at him! Will definitely do it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. Oh, the feelings. That's really, did he really switch accounts to <laughs> post that? <laughs> Alright, here's a pretty funny part. I'll let the game speak for itself here. Well, not this part. But in this cutscene. In this cutscene. This part. <laughs> yes, yeah, EJ's name's Crown Jewel. Haha. <laughs> Thanks for the GG's. And her dad is a gold digger. And the big treasure they had was a fake. So, uh... She was supposed to find an even bigger treasure, but it wasn't even a real treasure. Lots of love, Gold Digger. The end. Here, SRD, if you want, I can uh, stop now, or we, we can let the credits run. We're still like a good bit ahead of estimate, so. That would be cool too, yeah. This has not been a good year so far in terms of uh, people that have passed. Alright, I'll let the credits run. Now enjoy. It does give you a bit more stuff at the end. Like, um, the game isn't over once you beat the final boss, you actually unlock more stuff. You can't, like, for example, get all stamps before you, uh, beat the game. It's like post-games. There's a lot of post-game. 
the game itself isn't that long, so it's not like there's a lot of post-game. It's a pretty straightforward game, but... Compar compared to game length, there's quite a bit of post-game. But if you're in the post-game, you kind of explore all the places you've been to already. It's just that you have a little bit more access than before. Nice. I hope you enjoy your playthrough. I'm happy to hear that you like that this made you want to play it. It makes me happy. So you failed to secure the primal rune lens. I, I can offer only my apologies, mighty ducks. I probably shouldn't do voices. Uh, we have secured runes, rune lenses and raw lenses, but the largest one, the supposed primal lens, has been destroyed. In addition, the room in which the lens was found appears to have caved in as a result of the power released in the sigil's destruction. It would appear that we underestimated the adventurers, or at least some of them. I take full responsibility. The fault lies with me. I expected too much of you. Damn. I may. You may not. My lord, I just... Her swine. You obey me, not your own selfish whims. <gasps> Leave. Uh. Interesting, I'm wondering why it didn't work for me. Maybe I have to have a Steam Cloud enabled or something. I just realized, do I need to get like uh, all stamps again? Because I think I lost my full completion save. Alright, there we go! We beat the game! Hope you all enjoyed, and I'm gonna send it over to SRD, who will be running card stories.